Hey everybody, Todd here. Welcome back to another Wellness Talks, Tools and Trends. If you like what you hear here today, be sure to subscribe and to like this video. So jumping right in, this week's topic, playing around with, struggling with the what ifs. What if this doesn't go how I want it to go? What if I go after this degree and it's not the degree that I want? What if I take this job and this job doesn't turn out to be how I thought it would be? What if this is the wrong city for me to move to? What if this is the wrong partner to select in my life? The list can go on and on and on. And we can get stuck here. We can get hooked here. And this causes greater levels of distress and anxiety. And we can't always address that question. We won't know what the answer is until we've actually begun to engage. And we won't engage because we're stuck by the thought, what if? So I'm going to walk through three different things that you can do right now to help you deal with the anxiety of the what ifs. I'm going to start this by having you first just take a breath. Just take a deep breath and pause and notice what happens with your mind when you do this. So go ahead and take another deep breath, paying attention. Now I'd like you to take three more deep breaths. And what I'd like you to do is to slow it down. You're going to inhale, counting one, 1,000, two, 1,000, three, 1,000, pause there for a moment. And then I want you to breathe back out one, 1,000, two, 1,000, three, 1,000 and pause right there. Repeat this one, 1,000, two, 1,000, three, 1,000 pause one, 1,000, two, 1,000, three, 1,000 pause one last time on your own. Now, observe, reflect back on what happened when you were doing this. Notice any subtle changes that may have happened in your body. Notice any thoughts, any judgments, any evaluations, or even impulses. Just pay attention to those for a moment. Notice them. Bring them up front and center. We can do this anytime. We can take a breath. It's actually the beginning of the stop routine. Step back, take a breath, observe what's going on right now. All right. At the very least, this brings us into the present moment, gives us a little bit of separation, slows down the mind. Now from there, we're going to move into an awareness skill. You're already starting to do that. You're bringing these thoughts, these sensations, these memories, these judgments, and these evaluations right here so that I can actually see them, so that you can actually see them right in front of you. And now we're going to just go down into those. If we can see the thought, we can begin to unhook from the thought. So when you were doing the breathing exercise, thoughts like, I feel burned out. I feel like this is an uphill battle. I feel like my options are limited. I feel like I never do enough. I always make poor decisions when I do things like this. Notice those thoughts. Now, if you want, you can take your hand and put it directly over your eyes. That's what the thought actually feels like. That's what it's, the experience is like. I'm so lost, so hooked in this thought. Now we can always do the diffusion exercise. I'm thinking my options are limited. I'm thinking this is probably a bad idea. And then we can pull that away. Once again, giving space, diffusing from that thought, unhooking from that thought and notice that I'm thinking my options are limited. I'm noticing that I'm thinking I'm really afraid about this move. I'm noticing that I'm thinking, I don't know if I can hack it at this new job. It pulls it away. It allows us to unhook from it. 
Your mind is a meaning-making, thought-generating machine. And a lot of times these thoughts can be useful given the context, given is it something I can do right now in this moment that matters. But then there's also developing a certain level of patience. Now you think you might know what patience is, but I'm just going to read to you real quick the definition of patience. So patience is a capacity to accept or tolerate delay, trouble, or suffering without getting angry or upset, without getting pulled into that thought. So think about that for a moment. Maybe the value of patience would be something worth focusing on and moving towards a greater level of tolerance for pain and suffering and having to put in the work. But more importantly is noticing what happens when you get hooked by the thought and then the next thought and then the next thought and then the next thought. What if, what if, what if over and over and over again. What happens when you get hooked by that thought? How do you react? How do you behave? Just take a moment and acknowledge what you would typically do next when you have whatever thought it was that came up for you when you were doing the previous exercise. Is it worth it? Is it moving you forward? Is it a long-term action or is it a short-term goal? to get away from, to control, or to just avoid what it is that needs to be done in this moment. If we can do this, we can unhook, and that actually allows us some space then to be able to remember what it is that matters to us the most in the long run, and then to engage, move in the direction of that value. Not sure what that is? Well, let's move into the final component of this presentation where we're gonna tie these two pieces together and have a direction that you can do right now. And what I'd like for you to do is to actually think about somebody, a guide who's important to you. Bring to mind somebody who can support you. This is somebody that you respect. This is somebody that you admire. This is somebody who's made a positive impact on your life. What wisdom, knowledge, recommendation, or advice might this person give you, tell you, if they were sitting here with you right now, which you could benefit from, which would help you have a better understanding of what I need to do right now to move towards patience, to move towards independence, to move towards autonomy, to move towards strength, whatever your personal value, or at least whatever it is that matters to you the most in this moment. Write it down. Take a moment, write down what this person would actually tell you. Because if you can actually have that little piece out in front of you, and here's some examples of what I've gotten this week, you'll be fine. You're completely valid. The position you have is valid. Just get it done. Just press into it. Tuck whatever it is that you're dealing with under your arm and move. Let's just move forward and see what happens. You got this. They're going to give you something. And if you think about it, if you really step back and look at this, you're going to give you something that's going to move you in that direction. What's a small step that I can do that actually makes my life better tomorrow than today? If I stay where I am and I don't take that job, I'm still where I am and my life really doesn't become any better. If I take the job, there's a pretty good chance that at least for a little while, it's going to be better tomorrow than it is today. So how is it that we're going to engage? Think of somebody that you actually respect and who's helped you in the past. Bring up that memory, because even though it is a memory of an external person, a person out there, it's actually available to you right here, right now. You're carrying that with you. That wisdom, that knowledge is sitting right there. We just need a little mechanism to unlock it so that we know what to do. And we need to be able to unhook and tie all three of these things together. First, we just need to recognize here I am again with the whole what if, and we're worrying about the future. 
then if I can just remember, oh gosh, I'm doing that thing again and get present, pay attention to my breath. Notice the thoughts that are bubbling to the surface when I'm trying to pay attention to my breath. This is where the whole developing a mindfulness skill is essential. I start to notice the thoughts that are coming up when I'm trying to do that mindfulness component, when I'm trying to be present in this moment. Then I can actually see those thoughts, those thoughts that were already there, but I was fused to, and now I can think that they're there, and then I can notice that they're there, and then I can put, go, is this going to be useful right now? Because sometimes they are but oftentimes we get hooked by them and it becomes, and there's a certain level of despair and heaviness and burnout and we're just stuck, we're hooked. But once we can actually pull away and see that and then focus on something that matters, you may know what your personal values are, move in that direction. If you don't know what your personal values are, then try to bring up a guide, a person and what they would actually tell you Notice if you have any resistance to that, with that, what's that resistance about? You can repeat the whole process with that. I don't want to do this and run that through the whole process and begin to look at where am I going to go? What wisdom am I going to use that I'm already carrying to make my life better tomorrow? And this is how we can get through the what ifs because otherwise, we're just going to sit here getting more of the same. Until next time, may you be well. Mm -hmm.